Today, I have got four mystical decor pieces for you. Keep watching. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Welcome back, y'all. First project is a crystal ball sign. This is a little, I don't know what this is, a little sign from Dollar Tree. Some little pieces of wood, some chalkboard paint, and a sign from Dollar Tree. It's a hanging sign. It's nice enough as it is. But to make it look a little more high-end, I am going to rearrange it just a bit, add a little something else to it. I'm going to pull it apart. Then, since the little staple holes leave a little raised area, I want to smooth that down. And I'm just using a little sanding block for that. Then I've decided to leave the sides, but paint the top of this other sign. So I'm just going to use my little foam brush, use what you have, and just give this two good coats of paint, making sure that it is dry in between your coats. I'm also going to color most of the sides of the wood pieces. I'm going to go over the back of each of these signs as well, or each of the pieces, I should say and then around all of the edges. That way you don't see the little cardboard in there and it really makes it look a little bit more expensive. So this is the final result of how it looks when it's painted. A little bit may scratch off, but you can just, you know, touch that up. See, I've scratched a little bit off. Just touch it up with your um, paint sponge. It's still over there to the side, I'm sure. Just go back over it. I'm going to glue these down on the bottom back of the larger piece so that we can make this a standing sign. And the other smaller sign there is going to be our base. I'm just using some hot glue to put these together. And then I will look and see how I want to place these on this other sign because this sign is going to be the base. And I think I like the position of it all the way to the back, so I'm going to add my hot glue and put it all the way to the back. Just using my fingers to uh, kind of gauge where the edge is. This is how it's going to look so far. And I love the polka dots with that. I think it looks really good. I'm going to position this little open sign on the bottom. And I'm just going to mark it to make sure that it's centered. Just with a pencil. And this is just an artist pencil. You can use whatever you have. Just little marks so I can make sure that I've got it in the right position. And then we can use a razor, um, an eraser, <laughs> to remove those marks when we have it glued in place. So I'm going to make sure that I push it up so that the sign sits flat. That's the important thing to know. You want to make sure it sits flat. And you can go over the little, you can see the white edge under the open area there. Just go over it with the chalk paint and then it's going to look much better. This is how it's going to look. Simple, right? We can all do this. The next project is a moon wreath. Taking this Halloween sign from Dollar Tree, and I just recently found it. They're still putting out new stuff. I'm going to use this wire frame, a silver and a gray paint, some silver ribbon and black ribbon and black deco mesh, and some star ornaments. Pipe cleaners are what we're going to use to attach everything down. Now, do as I say, not as I do, except in this part. We're going to start by putting one around each of the crossbars in the sections. So right in the middle, right around the crossbar. I'm not sure if this frame came from Dollar Tree or from somewhere else, but it's all the same to me. All right, you see how I went to the outside ring? Don't do that. Go right back onto the same ring that you were already on. The same one, not the outside. Same one. All right, I'm going to pull the tag off here. I'm going to use a little sander here and just go over that area so it's nice and smooth. Again, we don't want little polka dots and stuff in here. I'm also going to go over all of the edges because it's kind of rough and not very finished looking. It's kind of choppy looking. So um, yours may be perfect, but this one needed a little work. So I'm just sanding over that to make it nice and smooth. I'm going to take this granite gray, which is a very light color, and um, go over this sign. I'm going to leave it streaky. I'm not going to fill it completely in. I want it to 
you to be able to see some of that brown or the shadowing through there because the moon itself is um, not just a big ball it's you know it's got crevices and deeper spots and higher spots and rough terrain and that's kind of what I'm going for in this I'm going to go around all of the edges as well this is how it will look you can watch my videos on Mondays and Thursdays at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. Once it is dried, you're going to go back over with the silver. And the silver is, is a pretty light tone like the paint that I used underneath. Same process here. I'm going to leave it a bit streaky. I want to be able to see some texture. I want to be able to see some highs and lows. So I'm just going to do it like this. Now, if you choose to make a moon for yourself but maybe you want your theme to be yellow and black you can certainly do yellow and maybe use some gold to go on top you can make this however you want to my videos are just for inspiration they are not to tell you what to do or that the way you do it is not right strictly for inspiration i do what i like and then you can take the ideas that you like from it and go with it make it your own i like it just like that Now we're going to start on the deco mesh part. This is the easiest deco mesh wreath I can show you how to make. We're going to take 12 inch pieces of this deco mesh and we're going to make a whole bunch of them. We're going to make 12 times 3, so we're going to have 36 pieces of black deco mesh or silver or orange or whatever color you want to use. And then we're just going to roll it roll it roll it roll it until it is about the diameter of somewhere between a nickel and a quarter you're going to pinch them together i just use a clamp to help me hold everything while i make my bundles i make all my bundles first so we're going to put them in threes and then once they're all done and we should have 12 bundles you can see the dollar tree mesh it frays and little pieces come out we're going to do the best we can with it i could have shown you this wreath with a more expensive mesh but i am i want to show you what it looks like with dollar tree so you'll know what you need to do to fix it if that's all that you can get okay so everything is placed down on the wreath now and we're going to move on to our ribbons we're going to cut these in a dovetail all of these in a dovetail you're going to have 12 pieces of black 12 pieces of silver and then I decided to use this because I have not used it yet. This is a paper looking ribbon from Dollar Tree. It's darker on one side than the other, but I thought, you know, it looks like birch, but it also looks like the surface of the moon to me. So we're going to go with it. We're going to try it. We're experimenting here, right? Okay, so we're just going to do the same thing. I'm, I show you the same thing almost every single time I do this. Just going to make an X and lay one over the center just like this my black ribbon does not have any wire but it's a good ribbon i finally used the last of my roll and i'm sad about that but it is what it is in crafting right okay it had a good life it had a good run okay so now when i start pulling do you see how that split it split this is not a paper but it is a weird i don't know i don't even know I don't know what the fabric is, but I said, okay, you know what? It split down the middle. I'm going to go with it. I'm just going to pull it when I get it up there on my frame. I'm just going to pull it and we're just going to make it look like it's two pieces instead of one, right? When we get lemons, we make lemonade. Next little bundle, we're going to put it down right beside it. Never mind that ornament over there that just came out of the blue. We're going to fluff. I'm going to separate that ribbon just like that. Now it looks like it did it on purpose, doesn't it? You can turn it around. You can use the darker side. When it's all full, this is how it is going to look. I love that that silver ribbon looks like it has, you know, it's got the little round the little circles in there. So it sort of looks like it's already like the full moon. I love it. Once you're done, you can clip off the extra pieces of pipe cleaner. Just make sure that you've twisted down well so you don't pull it apart when you're fluffing. And you can take all those off, then you can fluff out your little ribbon stacks, turn them here and there, and now you have a nice full wreath 
rather than the kind of sparse looking wreath we had before. And by the way, I used two, I believe I used two of those rolls of the mesh from Dollar Tree. And you just clip off the little pieces that are falling out. Now we need some way to put our moon down on the wreath. And I just try to get my position how I would like it. And I use the same technique every single time. Pipe cleaners with a little bit of hot glue and then a little scrap of either paper or ribbon to go on top. Be careful about your fingers here. As I've gone along, I'm learning more and I know what I can and can't tolerate as far as heat on my fingertips. Yeah, but you be careful, of course. Now, uh, for my ornament, I'm just snipping off the ends because I don't need the hanger piece. And I can decide uh, where I want those to go after I place my moon down. So I'm just going to take those pipe cleaners, feed them through the frame down there, and then flip it over. You don't want to pull too tightly because you will sink it down into the wreath, and that's not what I want to do. I want it to look as though it is floating on top. So I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to take the, the bottom part and feed that through as well. And then twist it around so that it stays in place. You could always cut off your extra if you want, but nobody's looking at the back of my wreath. So I'm not concerned about that. Now we can put the stars down. So I'm going to take a little star and put it here and a little star and put it there. And these stars came from the thrift store, but I'm almost certain you can get something like this at Walmart. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure you could get something like that. So I had four and I'm going to take the fourth one, leave the little hanger on it because we're going to hang it from the moon. Right from the tip of the moon. If I had a little black cat or something, I would sit it in the moon like I've seen on Pinterest. And that would be really cute, like the cat playing with the star. So certainly if you have something like that, it would be so cute in this wreath. But I didn't have it, and I'm working with what I have left of my supplies. But this is how it's going to look. By the way, if you're new to my channel, welcome. I am so happy to have you here. What do you think about that wreath? The next project is a crystal ball. Now bear with me folks, I know a lot of people have done the crystal ball before, but I never have, and I put my own spin on it like I encourage you to do. So we're gonna use a candlestick, some webs, and this little iridescent looking um, container, I guess you could say. I'm gonna cut off a little bit of that because a little bit goes a long way and pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it until all the lines are out of it. I want it to look cloud-like and puffy and mystical. I have a candle that came with a lantern piece that I bought from Dollar Tree. And I use this one because it changes colors. It goes green and blue and red and yellow. So my candlestick, I spray painted white, let it dry, and then just spritzed it with black spray paint on top. And now I'm going to take a darker silver color here and I'm going to add it to the candlestick. The candlestick, as I'm sure you already know, is going to be the base. I absolutely love the way that this paint um, style turned out, or this, this painting turned out. You can see just enough through that silver that you can see the black underneath, and it is really cool. It's almost like pewter, I guess you would I guess you could say. It's really, really nice. Uh, in person, I don't know if it's coming off on camera as well, but in person, it is very pretty. Oh, by the way, thank you for everybody who um, wished us uh, to feel better. I appreciate that, and everybody is on the mend. Everybody's on the mend, so thank you for your prayers and good wishes. See, that's really pretty, isn't it? But go all the way to the top. I'm gonna use the same paint on that brush and just kind of dry brush it over the base of this. I've already tucked my stuff on the inside. A little fluffy spiderweb stuff, which is now our mystical stuff. All right, wire ribbon from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna cut it off. This is in the gardening, gardening or regular decor section in Dollar Tree. I'm going to kind of measure around it and see how much I need and then using my little cutters here I'm just going to clip into the sides so that I can 
take one piece off and set the, set the rest of it aside. Now to connect this together, glue's not gonna work, right? So I decided to use some of this wire. This is floral wire and it's silver. So you'll barely even see it. I'm just gonna feed it through the holes that are already in here and twist it around. If you have little pliers that you can hold it with, that would be helpful. These are some jewelry pliers that I thrifted. And I'm just gonna kind of twist it around, not too tightly or it will snap off, but I'm just gonna twist it around just so it's snug. Then I can squeeze it down flat. And it almost makes it look like it, it's not even there. You, you barely notice it. Now this makes a little sleeve and it just slides right over that lid and I can still screw it on and off because it's not glued down. So look at this beautiful stand now. Isn't that pretty? Love it. I'm gonna add some of my Fix All Adhesive, which is the, uh, it's a super glue that you can get from Dollar Tree. Love it because it's a gel and it is wonderful. Also my Gorilla Glue Sticks. And I'm going to add that here and there. And then I'm going to flip it over and put it right down in the center until it is dried. Now I dimmed my lights a little bit so you can see how the color is changing inside of the ball. Now, depending on where you put your little light, if you put it right in the top, you're gonna obviously see it, see it more in the top. If you put it in the side, which I've done here, you're gonna see it more in the side. So you would want that to be your front where everybody can see the color changing. You don't have to shake it. You don't have to plug it in. You don't have to do anything special to get the light effects. And because you can screw the lid on and off, you'll be able to use it whenever you want. So here's our Cosmos Floral. I'm going to use this little thrifted hanging tin thingamabobber. This was a booger to get off. I don't know if they put it on here with tar or what. I'm gonna use some purple maple leaves, two bunches of Cosmos. These are absolutely stunning from Dollar Tree. And then some of these stickers from Dollar Tree. I'm only gonna use one sticker. Some more of this silver paint and some chalkboard paint. I began by trying to get this off with my heat gun. So I heated up the side and then thought that I could just pull it and it would come off. No, look at that, it's terrible. So we're not gonna work with that side because it left a mess when I pulled it off. We're gonna flip it over again with the, the lemons and lemonade. We're gonna use the back of it instead. But wait till you see what I do with this. Just wait. So we're gonna paint the entire thing with the chalkboard paint, the sides, the handle, the back. Don't worry about the inside because you're not gonna see it. Don't waste your paint. I'm making a mess, look at that. This is why I have paint all over my arms all the time. I'm gonna cut my picks apart, leaving these long, as long as I can get them because I want this arrangement to be kind of tall, not short and squatty. So all of the picks are gonna get clipped. I'm gonna use a scrap of my foam to hold our florals in. I just use my uh, metal ruler from Dollar Tree. I always use that to cut my foam, almost always. And then I'm gonna cut it at a slant because this is sort of a cone, squished cone shape. I know you can make these things out of cans, so you can certainly do your own if you would like. All right, so now I am going to start dry brushing with this silver. And remember what I have said in previous videos, I like to add a little at a time and then build up in layers because I have found that I get the best look that way and it doesn't muddy it out. Hey, thanks to all of you who have bought me coffee. It has been wonderful and thanks to all of you who've done super thanks. I appreciate it so much. It helps me. It helps my channel. It helps my family. Okay, so I'm just going to continue. You can see that I'm building up here, building up, blending out a little bit. I am... Uh, really in touch with my inner Bob here. I'm just doing the darn thing. Yes. And I am loving the way this is looking. Loving it. It reminds me of something that I couldn't even tell you what it was, but I, I really, really, really like this look. You can do the back too, but ideally this would be hanging off of a doorknob or off of the wall somewhere, so you wouldn't necessarily need to do the back. I'm gonna just press that in. You don't even have to glue it. I'm adding some of these um, eucalyptus or box, that, yeah, that's eucalyptus, that's not boxwood. I'm just gonna add three of those picks in here. It gives a little more height and I like the color 
combination with the Cosmos. I think it looks really good together, but you know you can be the judge of that. Use whichever type of colors that you like. I just thought it was kind of cool that we're doing like a celestial um, kind of mystical theme and that I found Cosmos flowers. That's kismet, right? Yeah. Okay, so we're just going to put those in, bend them around. I don't want them all standing straight up. Then I'm going to start using these purple leaves. And I'm just going to kind of bend those leaves a little bit toward the front. Everything's going to be bent a little bit toward the front, um, especially the flowers, so that they face forward instead of standing straight up. I want to see the beautiful flowers. I don't, I don't want to see just the side. I want to see those pretty little dark insides. Okay, so a little tip. These flowers have eight petals, but they are in two different pieces of four. Okay, if that makes sense to you. When you get them, most of the time they're not fluffed out and they're stacked on top of each other. So pivot those around so that you get the full presentation of the flower. And it looks so much prettier. You can see there how much better it looks. I'm sorry that I'm out of angle. Remember what I told y'all, I'm kind of, I don't know, I'm kind of intuitive with my crafting. I just, I get a feeling and I just kind of go with it. I just let it, that artistic wave just take me over. So I don't pay attention to the camera. I'm paying attention to what I'm doing. So I do apologize if that's annoying to y'all, but it's kind of the way I do things. I'm sorry. All right. So twisting around there, you can see now the flower petals are all opened up and it's very pretty. And I'm pushing my greenery to the top. And you can see here they're facing up and out, up and out, up and out, because I can really see what's going on in them. And I can see those beautiful dark middles, and I think it's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, now you can also do this. You can take another piece of greenery and feed it up on that same wire. And now look at that. Nice. Now you have a way to hold that other piece in there, and we can add some more purple right to the middle. I'm just going, looking from side to side, just like this, round and round, and making sure that I get it as full as I would like for it to be. I didn't want to mash anything up, so I had to kind of see where I could make that fit, poking it around in there, as my friend Trish says, poking daisies, poking posies, poking daisies. <laughs> okay, so the arrangement part is done, but now let's work on this bottom. I'm going to use a silver marker from Dollar Tree, and this is just my acrylic black um, pen. See the paint on my finger? I'm telling y'all all the time. All right, so I'm just going to start making some little circles going up on each side of the seam here. We're going to make this look intentional. All the way up. These don't have to be perfect circles. There's, nobody's judging your circles here. These are meant to look like holes where you are lacing something up and you really don't notice unless you get really close to it if they are not all the same size and all in the same position i got my ruler out but then i was like nah i'm not gonna measure you can see the two on the bottom the one on the right's a little too close to the middle it's not a problem now let's lace it up you're just gonna go back and forth back and forth back and forth like lace in your shoes all the way up to your last row so if you don't have something like this and you're doing this on a jar or whatever you can still do the same design just draw your line straight down and then do your dots make your own seam there you know and then do your own thing you do this on a pumpkin too to make it look like stitching that would be really cool Back and forth, back and forth. Okay, so now all of our lace is in there. I'm gonna take that. Yeah, you're gonna let it dry first. We don't wanna mess up our silver pen by dipping it in black. So once it is completely dry, you're gonna go in there with the silver and just add dots, dot, 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 all the way up. We're gonna dot, 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 all the way up. This is really gonna make this stand out and it almost looks like it has grommets where you are lacing it. Look how that stands out now. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. It looks like old metal, doesn't it? So pretty. So now I'm gonna choose a sticker. And I think I like the crow here. The crow, the raven, the blackbird. 
the magpie, whatever. You can make a pick or you can put it somewhere on the bottom. I love that his flowers are also purple, bluish purple, just like the Cosmos that we used. I'm gonna add some hot glue, even though this is a sticker, because things like to pop off of that metal, right? Here are our creations. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. I love, love, love bringing you affordable options for decor in your home. Also bringing you things that are a little bit different than what you normally see. Just to give you some inspiration. There's nothing at all wrong with emulating something that you see to the T. You can definitely do that. That to me is a, is a compliment. But what makes my heart sing is when you guys look at something that I make and then you do your own thing. You get that little spark and you go, oh, I know what I could do, or I really like what she did, but I would do it different. Go ahead and do it different. I believe in you, and I know that we all have a little bit of that creative spark inside of us. We just have to grow it. We just have to nourish it. We have to do what is going to bring us joy in our life. We have to stay away from the negativity and stay positive. And doing something that brings you joy is going to help you be positive. It's going to help you smile. It's going to help you have a good day. And then think of something that you can make and gift it to someone else to bring a smile to their face. Then you're sharing that love. You're sharing that joy. I would love it if you do create something that I inspired. Send me an email with a picture in it. I would love to see it. And at some point, I would like to kind of show everybody's work. Okay, so here's a close-up of the crystal ball. Look at the color changing in there. Isn't that pretty? I had a hard time getting the right angle so that you wouldn't just see me and my camera. So I apologize. You can still see the camera in there. But look how pretty that looks. And when it changes colors, it almost looks like it's moving very mystical. I hope you enjoyed these videos. Thank you so very much for stopping by, and I'll see you again soon. Bye!